Hello again. I have an idea that most viewers will be familiar with the concept of the microaggression, those trifling little actions or failures to act, words spoken or unspoken, eye contact made or not made, which brand some hapless white person as a secret racist. Among the worst of these offences is, of course, asking a black person where he or she is really from. We saw an example of this the year before last, of course, when a woman called Marlene Headley, born in Harlesden, parents from the West Indies, turned up at Buckingham Palace in fancy dress and calling herself Ngozi Falani. Not unnaturally, somebody asked where she was from, which then turned into a hideous row and accusations needed to say of racial prejudice. Fancy asking a black woman where she was from, or showing particular interest in her ethnicity and origins. I hope we all understand that this is, by the current rules of the game, out and out racism. In the description to this video I give a link to a news item to remind people about the vow that this all caused. In the magazine Business Insider a couple of weeks ago, a black woman called Nadia Craig Creveco, who wanted to live in Europe, wrote an article saying that as a black woman she was made to feel invisible in Europe. The headline is, Feeling Invisible, One Black Woman's Experience with Europe's Indifference to Race. I give a link in the description to this video to the piece. <coughs> How does this work, you ask? How does indifference to race make somebody feel invisible? I shall quote her words. In the US, I'm not just a woman, but a black woman. This is an important part of my self-perception in this world. It seems that as someone who grew up with a strong understanding of her identity, she was surprised and exhausted by the indifference of the Europeans. She felt constantly duped and therefore left Europe. You see, and I quote again, people said, why do you always bring up your origin? Your parents are Haitian, so you're Haitian. Nadia told Business Insider, nobody cared about the fact that she neither felt Haitian nor a typical American or European, but felt that she was a black woman. It became very difficult to complete even simple tasks and stick to a schedule. Depression can manifest differently in black women. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of it either. But I understand that in her case, this, this indifference to and acceptance of her colour caused her to start being unable to complete things on time. You see what is happening here? It is a foolproof way of proving all white people to be racists. If they show any interest in a black person's heritage and origins and ask them questions about their identity or where they're from, that's a microaggression and evidence of racism. If, on the other hand, they should show no interest at all in the subject and just treat the person the same as anybody else whom they meet, then they are erasing her identity and making her feel invisible. There is something quite marvellous about this arrangement, as I'm sure that viewers will agree. Say nothing at all and treat a black person as though they are simply English or American, as the case might be, and you're likely to cause them to become so depressed they can't do their job properly. Ask about their background and what country their parents were from, though, and you're committing a microaggression against them. I found a few other similar matching instances of microaggressions where avoiding a microaggression is also an act of racism in itself. It almost looks as though a cunning trap has been laid and whatever a white person's actions or reactions, it is always possible to point to them as being motivated by racial prejudice. <laughs> 